YouTube channel, hashtag Movie Bay. I am Movie Bay, and in this video, I'm going to be recapping episode two of Baddies West. But before we get to it, to it though, I would like for you all to drop down and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Because here at Movie Bay, I do reviews, reactions, and commentary to movies and television. And if that's the type of content that you like, you might as well hit the subscribe button and stick around. And if you find yourself enjoying my commentary along the way, don't be afraid to hit that thumbs up button and or drop a comment down below. Okay, support black businesses. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get into the ratchery of it all. Of course, this episode starts off where the last one ended, Roly versus Stunna. Stunna girl throws a drink in Roly's face and pulls her hair all the way over to the seat, okay? Now, Biggie, Biggie decides that she's going to jump up and quote-unquote jump in the fight, and she's bragging about it. Now, I didn't see this lick that she quote-unquote connected to or connected with. I did see her jump up. I did see her trying to get at Stunna, but I didn't see any connect. So even if she did connect, why are you bragging about it? Like, why is that something to brag about that you jumping in fights? Make it make sense to me. And Kat was asking the same thing. She was like, but that shit you all know, like, why was you trying to jump in? And then everybody's story was getting all confused. Like, you didn't see Stunna throw a drink at her? Yeah, about five minutes ago. Biggie was honestly just giving, she wanted to jump in in defense of Rolly to possibly have a friend. I don't think Biggie was fighting for herself. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. So it's like I said, it's a huge kerfuffle on the van. Rolly and Stunna get separated. Stunna has to take a separate van to the house. So while everybody is talking amongst each other, Natalie tells the girls about Stunna's past when she put a fellow rap chick in a cage and everybody is in shock. Razor in particular is like, why the hell y'all got me <laughs> in a house with a crazy bitch? And I'm, I agree. Like, can we please start vetting the cast? Because I feel like the safety of all cast members and production crew members, it should be a priority, Zeus. Because that's how you get lawsuits, Zeus, by not vetting your cast. So please, let's do that in the future, okay? So the girls finally make it to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air mansion. <laughs> and they're standing outside of it. I'm like, why the fuck are we standing outside? Is it not ready yet? Is it not clean yet? Is it not 3 o'clock and it hasn't opened yet? Like, we're not available to get the lockbox key yet? Like, what the hell? Why are we standing outside? So everybody is yelling and screaming because they're just over talking each other i'm like please somebody give these bitches a talking stick so we can hear what everybody is saying when they're saying it but natalie just informs the crew that uh rock is going to be late and tommy is going to be late and lo is just like okay story of the day like it's that's nothing new so um natalie is trying to appoint somebody to go check on Stunner Girl and Roly and Biggie lame ass. Like, I'll, I'll go check on her. Shut up. Like, y'all too old to be acting like that. It's giving, it's giving middle school, high school. Like, please stop. Please. It ain't that fucking crucial, bro. So Kat volunteers um, after yelling to get everybody to shut the hell up <laughs> to go check on Stunner Girl. So inside the mansion, everybody's about to get their rooms and Natalie stops them to narrate the season again. And what's so funny is in everybody's confessionals, Razor, Kat, and Lo, all the new girls, they are complaining about Natalie and her speeches. And like, like, bro, Natalie, you don't need Natalie. You do not need to narrate everything. Can we please stop editing that shit into the goddamn show? Like, you don't have to tell everybody, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And you're going to go here and then we're going to do there. And it's like... Bitch, what? And then on top of that, you're assigning rooms to grown-ass women? Bitch, what? Like, this ain't summer camp. Let these bitches run through the mansion, like, every freaking show when they get into a mansion and go find their own rooms and room with who they want to room with. Like, why you got to assign pairs? That's lame. And then let's talk about the bed situation. Why the fuck they got cots on the floor? Like, Zeus, y'all make it way too much money to be having cots on the floor. If you can't find an Airbnb with 15 beds, then you don't need to cast 15 bitches. Okay? So Kat goes and checks on Stunna, and I like the fact that Kat is being real with Stunna. Like she was saying how, well, Stunna was like, don't make threats to me and not stand on it. And then Kat was like, well, Rowley actually said the same thing. Cause like, let's be honest. If I'm a Philly girl and I'm in Philly and another Philly girl threatened me, I'm a, I'm a take heed to that. You know what I'm saying? So I like the fact that Kat was keeping it 100 with Stunna. 
Like, the same way you don't want threats made at you, you shouldn't be making threats at other people. Um, but cat is still like, because that's like how you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to tell your homegirls or your little sis, your little mentees, tell them about themselves and still like, you know, pep them up. Like, okay, forget about all the drama. Let's go in here. We're going to have fun. Da, da, da. And that's exactly what Kat did, okay? All right, so back at the mansion, Natalie is yelling across the house for Biggie, and Biggie comes to her room, and she tells Biggie that Biggie's going to be her right-hand man. And I'm just thinking, like, why? Because that ain't going to do nothing but big Biggie's head up even more. And it's like, you know how it was, like, on Jocelyn's Cabaret, talking about my bottom bitch? That's the energy that it's giving. And you just know that it's going to start more drama. Now, Biggie and Natalie, they are going to FaceTime Rock and Tommy. When they FaceTime Rock, the Rock says she's about 30 minutes away. And in her confessional, she was like, damn, I'm going to get there when I get there. And it's like, bitch, why are you even on this show? Because if you ask me, it's giving like she was contracted to do this show in order to get her own show. Like, if you want you and Blue to have y'all on show, you got to do Baddies 3. You know what I'm saying? Because she is not taking it seriously. It, it's really unprofessional. Like, ain't nobody, ain't no other production company is going to work with you aside from Ratchet Ass Zeus because you're unprofessional. You're a liability on top of that. Like, girl, you need to get it together if you plan on continuing to make money, like real money, bigger money than Zeus, Okay. Now, when Natalie calls Tommy and she tells Tommy that she going to be FaceTiming with Biggie, ah, Tommy, ah, Tommy was like, the fuck is that? Ah, I ain't got no motherfucking roommate, bitch. I'm EP in this whole life. But, bro, I'm dead. Tommy reaction. I know that bitch was like, no. Ah, I'm sorry, y'all. That was funny. Because who the fuck is Biggie? What the fuck is a big Biggie? Like, fuck out of here, girl. So Rock and Sky finally arrived. They're quote unquote 10 hours late and Rock was um, supposedly getting her hair done. Now Rock takes her tooth out, y'all. I mean, that's not important, but I just wanted to let y'all know that bitch nasty. <laughs> that bitch is nasty. Um, this whole conversation, the chemistry between Rock and Natalie is so forced and is it, it was really cringy to watch. It, Natalie was really trying way too hard and trying not to step on Rock's toes because you don't never know how Rock going to react. Don't nobody want to work with or work around somebody who is literally a ticking time bomb. Like, no. So Natalie um, calls Biggie to round up the girls <laughs> and is giving the help. <laughs> this bitch is a PA. <laughs> And she's security for what she's saying. <laughs> Biggie, they playing you, bro. They playing you, sis. Now, Stunna takes this opportunity to run up on Biggie when all the girls are coming downstairs. But security was in a way, so it was kind of like pointless. And now Stunna and Kat are isolated from the other girls. Now, everybody is on the couch. And peep how Biggie gives her seat up for Rolly. Peep that. Everybody's on the couch. And Natalie brings up the photo shoot, how she wants to talk about all the issues. And Razor in her confessional is like, I'm tired of talking about this shit. Me too, Razor. But you know, they got to have some drama. They got to get out. They got to get the fights out. Okay. So Lo um, starts to mention how everybody was late. Well, not everybody, but she mentions how Rock and uh, Stunner Girl were being unprofessional. They were late and they were holding a production. All facts. Okay. And the fact that Low mentioned Rock and Stunna to me shows that Rock wasn't clearly just the only problem. And Low kept trying to say that when she was explaining, like, it wasn't just you, but you did play a part as well. Now, <laughs> in the midst of this conversation, everybody's confessional is like, Rock getting ready, she popping her knuckles, she looking around, she doing this. Why Low don't understand what's going on? Why she not reading the room? It's like, so if everybody noticing this, why ain't nobody speaking up and saying nothing? Especially DJ Sky, because you're supposed to be the babysitter, quote unquote. And Riley, Riley mentioned something in her confessional that is so annoying. She was like, people can't tell Rock what to do without her swinging. And that's sad. That is a problem. If you cannot take criticism, constructive criticism, how are you ever going to grow as a person? Because you just want to swing off on anybody who got something to say wrong about what you're doing. Especially when it's wrong about what you're doing. 
And I don't want to hear that, oh, she 21, she 22. It don't matter, bro. When I was 21, I was able to take constructive criticism. I knew right from wrong. I knew how to check myself so other people wouldn't even have to check me. If she knew how to check herself, she wouldn't have to worry about other people being checking her. So, I don't, I, I, y'all, I really don't like rock. I just don't. And I can't wait till somebody beat her ass. OMG, I can't wait till she get her ass beat. Anyways, <laughs> so other people start talking about it. Razor starts talking about it. Biggie starts talking about how people were unprofessional. And Rock literally redirects the conversation back to Low. And Low stands on her points, period. And then that's when Rock jumps on Low. So <laughs> the next episode, we are going to see Low and Rock get their round two. And then we're going to have Stunna versus Tommy, Biggie, and Roly. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. Be sure you hit that subscribe button to stay around for more um, Baddies Rest reviews along with all the other content that I drop when I drop it. If you enjoy my commentary, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Are you team Stunna Girl or are you team Roly, Biggie, Tommy? Are you team Low or are you team Crazy Ass Rock? Don't forget to leave all commentary on this episode down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see y'all next time. It's a date.